Ford has consigned its Falcon range to history, ending 56 years of the car's continuous manufacturing in Australia. Originally an American design to compete with smaller imports out of Europe, the Falcon was also the right size to wind back Holden's sales domination in Australia. But early Falcons, 1960s XK, and the facelifted XL of 1962 just weren't tough enough for local roads. Local content and design input improved the durability of the XM model of 1964 and the facelifted XP a year later, promoted by a 70,000 mile torture test around Ford's Yu Yang's proving ground. Ford Australia's next Falcon was the larger XR model of 1966, the model that kicked off a succession of wins in touring car races, with the GT model boasting a 4.7 litre V8 and four-speed manual gearbox. The win on Sunday, sell on Monday ethos was given a boost with a larger 4.9 litre Windsor V8 in the XT facelift of 1967, the car that won Ford Australia the team prize in the 1968 London to Sydney Marathon. A more substantial revamp, the XW model, arrived in 1969 with a 5.8 litre V8 and a handling option package for the GT. This Phase 1 GTHO model was succeeded by the Phase 2 model with a Cleveland V8. Finally, with the XY facelift in 1970 came the pinnacle of Falcon GT heritage, the Phase 3 model. While public attention focused on the winning V8 Falcons, Ford was also building basic variants in sedan, wagon, utility and van body styles. Looking new from the ground up, the XA Falcon of 1972 retained the same basic but sturdy double wishbone front end and a leaf sprung live axle, a configuration that lasted in mainstream production for another 10 years. Due to the supercar scare in the media, just a handful of the XA Falcon GT Phase 4 ran down the production line in 1972, but a stylish coupe model was reintroduced for the first time since the 1965 XP Falcon. In 1973, the XB Falcon update gained contemporary Mustang frontal styling and a four-wheel disc brake setup for the GT, with another facelift, the XC, in 1976, which moved to a cross-flow head for the six-cylinder engines, improving efficiency and performance. Falcon Coupe production ended in 1978. The limited edition XC Falcon Cobra, now a highly prized collectible car and the Falcon GT was supplanted by the heavier, luxury-oriented Fairmont GXL. In 1979, the XD Falcon poached its fresh new look from Ford's European Granada. The Fairmont GXL was now renamed Fairmont Gear. A more efficient alloy head for the 3.3 and 4.1 litre six-cylinder engines in 1980 helped Falcon overtake Commodore in sales. With the end of HZ Holden production, Falcon became the first choice for taxi operators over the smaller Commodore. In 1982, the Falcon XE rode into town on a transverse watts link and coil springs for the live rear axle. Six cylinder engines now sucked air through a downdraft Weber carburetor. With a rounder nose for 1984, the XF Falcon was more aerodynamic, but from the A pillars back, remained faithful to the 1979 XD design. Despite dropping the V8 for a fuel injected six, the XF remains Ford's most popular Aussie Falcon ever. Rushed into production ahead of the VN Commodore, the stylish 1988 EA Falcon earned a reputation for poor build quality, but introduced an overhead cam six cylinder. Falcon sedans and wagons diverged from the commercials, with the XF van and ute replaced by XG and XH models from the same lineage. The XH adopted the EA Falcon's new overhead cam six, and the four-speed automatic introduced for Series 2 EA production, replacing the old three-speed auto. V8 power, a 4.9-litre fuel-injected Windsor, was reintroduced with the EB facelift of 1991, and the GT badge was revived for a limited number of cars modified by British firm Tickford. All six-cylinder variants were now port-injected, and Tickford developed the first XR6 from a tweaked Falcon S. The EB Falcon was subtly redesigned for the ED Falcon of 1993, followed in 1994 by the stronger, safer EF model with new hang-ons, but retaining the doors and roof structure of the EA. Ford's EL Falcon update in 1996 couldn't compete for sales with the newer VT Commodore of 1997. The AU Falcon that followed the EL model at the end of 1998 was criticised for its style and languished behind the Commodore for sales, despite significant technical improvements. Tickford and Ford established Ford Tickford Experience, FTE, in 1999, 
to sell enhanced performance Falcons and a long wheelbase Fairlane variant in competition with HSV. Ford dropped the Falcon van, but the AU Ute of 1999 was built on a hybrid monocoque chassis construction suitable for aftermarket bodies, including van conversions. With the BA model of 2002, Falcon sales improved. The Geelong built six cylinder was now a double overhead cam unit. Control blade independent rear suspension replaced both the live rear axle and the expensive double wishbone IRS previously available in the AU sedans. A turbocharged version of the new 6 powered the XR6 turbo hull, a V8 killer. And FTE, renamed Ford Performance Vehicles, set about finding more performance from the Turbo 6 and the V8. In 2005, the BF Falcon facelift delivered more power and a ZF 6-speed automatic transmission for high-grade models. The next model to arrive was the FG Falcon of 2008, dropping the stale Fairmont nameplate for the luxury variants. Also coming to the end of the line were the Falcon Wagon and the long wheelbase Fairlane. In May 2013, Ford Australia delivered the shock announcement it would cease to build cars in Australia from October 2016. Unfortunately, part of this transformation means that we will cease our manufacturing operations in October of 2016. This puts our losses over the last five years at approximately $600 million. A little over 12 months later, the FG X Falcon arrived, accompanied by little fanfare. Some have been all too ready to dismiss the Falcon as a relic of the past, but for fans of the name, the Falcon's past is a glorious one indeed.